Yeah, so what is open intelligence? If you stop thinking just for a moment, are you stopping thinking? Stop thinking for a moment, what remains when you stop thinking? Your intelligence, whether you call it human intelligence or any other kind of intelligence. When you stop thinking, you notice your intelligence. It's really quite simple. It's that which is looking, hearing, sensing. So that's great. Open intelligence is there, whether thinking or not thinking. So when you start thinking again, open intelligence is still there. It's primary. It's required for the thinking. It's inseparable from the thinking, actually. So that's great. It's a vast intelligence that if you look for its origination, or if you look for its beginning, or you consider where is the end of this intelligence, you can't really find it. You can't conclusively pinpoint it and name it anything other than an intelligence. So open intelligence is simply a term that we use in balance view. It's, it's an intelligence that's always been here, but it, it's open. We can see that it can't be closed in within a skin line, or it can't be boxed into some sort of uh, frame of reference. It's open. So that uh, we just have found throughout the years that this is a, a term that most people can relate to. I have an intelligence and it's open, simple. And this open intelligence is the basis of all data, the basis of all thinking, all emoting, all sensations, people, places, and things. So all data are inseparable from this open intelligence. Like the color blue in the sky are inseparable. You can't take out blue, blueness from the sky. You can't take away this intelligence from the thoughts, the emotions, the sensations. You can try that doesn't quite work. So open intelligence is the basis of all data, whether it's a positive data or neutral or negative. So all data are equal and even as open intelligence. So a simple practice in the balance view training is resting as open intelligence for short moments, repeated many times. This open intelligence, which is primary, becomes more and more obvious it moves into the foreground. Before an introduction to open intelligence, we're focused in on all of the data. So just very practically, if you're busy and you're having lots of experiences throughout your day, you know, all kinds of thoughts are coming in, one thing happens, another set of data appears, if we're only placing the emphasis on the data descriptions, it's kind of like being in a valley where we can't see a vast overview of everything that's going on. So if you get irritated or you're having some kind of negative thoughts or emotions or sensations, the tendency is to put all of the attention on the descriptions. And then we feel tense, worried, anxious, maybe more further annoyed and frustrated. So then we might look for ways to get rid of the negativity in our life. So then we try to place all the emphasis on cultivating positive states. Thinking, well, if I'm angry and busy, maybe I should devote time to cultivating happiness. So again, that's a very limited perspective. Through relying on this open intelligence, that which includes and contains all data, we have more and more clarity, more and more insight, more and more discernment for each time, place, and circumstance. So as I stated that positive, negative, and neutral are equal and even in open intelligence. Now that comes about through relying on open intelligence that we instinctively start to realize this. It doesn't happen through an intellectual manipulation, you could say. So if you're trying to somehow make if you're busy and you're saying, oh, this feels negative, if you're trying to make it positive, it doesn't quite work that way. So easy, the easier approach is to rest as open intelligence for short moments many times. Keep bringing the attention back to this basic state that is unaffected by the positive, negative, and neutral. So if you, 
you know, before I came to the training, I liked to sit quietly, but I tried to prolong those moments of sitting quietly. I was trying to actively control my thinking. I was trying to focus in on particular s states and sensations in order to push away the negativity. And um, th that was just too much effort. There were moments of feeling a sense of ease and satisfaction and like, okay, maybe this isn't such a big deal after all, but it, it was still saying that there was something wrong with my negative data attributing an independence to these negative descriptions. But in short moments, repeated many times, I started to see that that ease, empowerment, peace and harmony was actually available in all circumstances. Being completely busy, all, they're all contained in this ease of, of reality. So it's just the emphasis on all of the description that makes it feel not like how we want it, or, or a sense of suffering. So what I see if I'm really busy, I remind myself of short moments of open intelligence. Another key statement that has helped me tremendously and still does is short moments of not describing. When I just stop describing, holding desperately to the positive and really trying to get rid of the negative, what opens up? And just like when I asked you to stop thinking in the beginning of the talk, there's that same open intelligence that is completely unaffected if you're busy or not busy. The, the quality of your intelligence that is pure at its essence and always there and available. So that's how I find time, if I'm really busy, to enjoy. I start to enjoy even the times of being busy and there's a um, skillful means to maneuver the day rather than cope. <laughs> Before it was like coping mechanisms. Okay, if I don't, in order to survive a busy day, I need to eat a certain way, I need to do a certain amount of exercise, and I need to be by myself. Otherwise, a busy day is not manageable. So that was, you know, I had set these very strict rules in place to manage my life and if for some reason those strategies for allowing me to feel comfortable and ease were not available then I felt at the, vic at the whim, I felt like a victim of the circumstance. Like, oh, I'm so stressed because I didn't get to do my exercise this morning. Or I feel stressed because I didn't have any alone time today, there was none. And therefore, you know, it's just like this whole array of cause and effect. So the simplicity of coming back to short moments, resting body and mind completely, stop describing. Through doing that, you, this openness and ease in all moments becomes more and more predominant. Like you would learn anything new, you would just practice. We just test it out again and again. So when I came to the training and I heard the, the talks from the trainers and some of it made sense, a lot of it didn't because I was coming at it from a conventional vantage point from everything I'd learned in previous teachings and what I'd read, what I'd seen role modeled to me. But just having the openness to test out these short moments, I started to quickly realize an immediate benefit, an immediate relief if anger arose, for instance, or if depression was coming up for no reason at all, or if there was intense joy. So I just started to practice these short moments. And, you know, this is available for everyone, no matter how, you could say, into the practice we are, if we're here for the first time or if we've been coming for 10 years now. It's such a profound practice, immediately aligned with reality as it is. Like this intelligence as it is, can you, can you turn it on? Can you manipulate it, really? I mean, we can get ourselves into states. We could probably take some sort of substance and get into a mind-altered state and think, aha, oh, that's, that's where it is. But it's in your, it's, it's available all the time.
available all the time and it becomes more and more so obvious. And we see then that the data, like I start to now see that busyness, there's a way to arrange it in a way, effortlessly you could say, letting the flow of data be as it is and then seeing what will be of greatest benefit. So it includes and contains if we, if we want to have time for ourselves, but, maybe, but we're not dependent upon that. It's like maybe you see, well, maybe I'll find an hour this week to relax for five minutes by myself and just really ease into it. Or maybe it means that we just see what needs to be attended to, like the, the family and seeing that, wow, they need my help right now. It just becomes so obvious what will be of most benefit when we have the vantage of open intelligence, like being on the, the mountaintop. So bringing it back to the simplicity of powerful open intelligence. The basis of, of all thinking, the basis of all, of all emotions, all sensations. So we get to know our intelligence very intimately, where it no longer is an abstract idea. When, I mean, most of us also think that there's this intelligence and then there's some other unknown intelligence. Maybe we name it, maybe we don't name it. I mean, even at a young age, a lot of us can tell that there's something important going on besides all of the describing and systems and, and means to keep everyone in, a, in order. Like, do you remember when you were at school and you're like, there's got to be something more important than learning algebra or a history of, um, I don't know, your Western civilization from 1100 to 1200. It's like, there's something so much more important. And, yeah, there is, and, but we have access to that. And, and every here and now you have access to that most important choice of open intelligence. And you start to see what is most important on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, relating with one another is, how important is that? It doesn't matter what happened a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, three hundred thousand years ago. It's what's important right now in this here and now. How to use our intelligence right now to be of greatest benefit. Where we feel free, freedom, ultimate freedom, ease, relaxation, harmony. You see how nature is in complete harmony as it is. We are able to live like this with all humans. There is a way to do that. We test it in our own experience first. You see that we have a whole constellation of, of internal data that we need to be able to get along with also. So if we're constantly indulging in something like irritation, it just is a sign that we need to harmonize the relationship with ourselves. Just letting that irritation be as it is, not categorizing it into positive, negative, or neutral. And at some point it just it dissolves naturally, it releases naturally. All data self-release anyway. They rise and they self-release. We can't capture them. We can't hold on to them in any particular way. So that there's a, a sense of freedom in that. Like you can't hold on to the state that you think you're in. Ah, no need to be a particular way. <clears throat> like something like shame. So if we feel shameful, we can either indulge in it it's like you write a story about all the reasons why you feel shameful and then it, you take on that identity through indulging in it. Or we try to replace it with, I'm not shameful, I'm not shameful, I'm not shameful, or other strategies like um, just completely avoiding it altogether. Just allowing it to be as it is, the shine of open intelligence. It's just another datum arising and self-releasing. We can make all kinds of stories about shame, regret, and so forth. But why not just let it be as it is and see that it actually does self-release. It only pops into our mind time to time. 
and then we're on to the next datum. And op all the while, open intelligence, stable, free, powerful. So this is the how-to, short moments repeated many times. And with this practice, we have the, the support network, the four mainstays. There's the practice of short moments, a trainer, a training in a community which makes open intelligence a, a lived reality for, for all of us in an easy and effortless way. Like you just see people all around the world who are tapping into their most comprehensive natural intelligence. Um, people that are, have complete mental and emotional stability, contributing their gifts, strengths, and talents to the benefit of all. A training that only confirms that you don't need to achieve open intelligence. It's not a special state in that you probably won't get there. Like everything I read before this was mentioning, well, it's very difficult to, for self-realization. And it made it sound really difficult. Maybe in this amount of lifetimes, you might, if you do enough virtuous acts, then you will, you'll know yourself as you are. But how can that be the case? You already are as you are. And these short moments is a special tool that allows us to see this in every moment. And we see we can't get out of open intelligence. Where would you go? You might have ideas of where we would go. Maybe it's a different realm or... Um, but all the while, it's still open intelligence. Open intelligence is required to know anything, to be anything. It's, and this, yeah, this open intelligence is not a, you could say, like an evil, a good and evil force battling itself. It's just a... A basic state of, of benefit and purity.